Hi everyone, Pete here from Make a Repair. Today I'm going to look at one method of removing conformal coating. So conformal coating is a bit of a challenge to repairers such as myself. It hinders probing, part removal, soldering, that sort of thing. It's only when you come to examine the board close up that you can even see it. For example, on this board, the bottom three segments are conformally coated. Before I give conformal coating a bad name, it can actually be very important and, and it's essential to electronics in many ways, particularly high voltage, for example. And I do indeed use it occasionally. Now, the product that I use is this one. It's an acrylic conformal coating from MG Chemicals and it mainly protects against moisture. It is number 419D for those interested. Now, I don't normally talk a lot about health and safety on this channel, but this is the safety sheet for one spray. Uh, and you may find yourself using quite a lot of these chemicals. Um, now, this includes instructions for the hospital in case you breathe the vapour, for example, and it will permanently damage your lungs. So be bloody careful, follow the instructions. OK, so uh, there we go. Sermon's over. Just take care. Now, the actual removal method, of course, is going to depend on what type the coating is. Uh, and here are a few with some comments from MG Chemicals. Um, sadly, I don't have the silicon or the UV cure, but I will test it on a few of the other more common types. Um, so acrylics, polyurethanes, epoxy, I will try it on. Paraline, I haven't got any of, unfortunately, and it is very expensive, so hopefully you won't come across that one too often. This solvent apparently can soften it, make it more gel-like and easier to remove. So here are four test samples uh, that I prepared yesterday. Now, I did have to hunt around to find the chemicals for them all um, in my cupboards and someone else's as, as well, but I did manage to find them. So on the left, we've got acrylic 419D, which is the spray that I use most. It's been cured per instructions, and in actual fact, they've all been cured per instructions, and, and most of them did require heat. So next up, we've got a PU polyurethane one-part spray. Um, which unfortunately that's pretty much all I know about it. Unfortunately the original label has fallen off and it was just literally written on the can that it was a PU one part coating. Um, so you know it is what it is. The third one is a PU two part resin and uh, I've added a little bit of white to that just so we can see it a bit more clearly. The first and last ones actually do have a UV indicator um, but I'm not messing around with UV lamps and things for this video. So last up we've got the epoxy. This is a two part epoxy and it's been applied by brush. So we've got epoxy, we've got a PU two part, a PU one part and an acrylic. So unfortunately no silicon and no paraline or anything like that. But uh, this should be enough to uh, give us a good indication, I think, of the success or failure of the remover chemical. Okay, so here is the chemical that I'm gonna try. This is MG Chemicals 8310A gel. And uh, they also do 8309, which is liquid, and 8309P, which is a 10 millimeter milliliter pen. Now I was also going to try nitrum or paint stripper because the original contained the main active ingredient which is uh, dimethyl chloride but it turns out that they have abandoned that in the new version despite they still label it original. That's because of an EU regulation. Now like most people for just removing um, well let's say I just want to probe a resistor or a transistor I'll uh, just use a, a trusty scalpel to, to scrape away a little bit of material. Now, personally I prefer to use one of these slightly heavier scalpels with a curved blade as opposed to one of these pointy ones. You can kind of see already that the tip has broken off this. So it's just a bit stronger and a bit easier to control for scraping. So this has got a Swan and Morton number no. 4 handle and a number no. 23 curved blade just for those interested. I also use a fiberglass and brass tipped abrasive pen from time to time. Anyway, the point of this video really is to try out this stripper chemical uh, and I chose it because it's readily available. You can get this from RS, from Farnell and various places and you should have no problem getting this in the EU, Americas and, uh, you know, the rest of the world should be no real problem. Fingers crossed. Anyway, I chose the gel because I think that it will be more cost effective for me compared to the pen or the liquid. So liquid if you want to dip it, pen if you want to just be able to rub away just one or two junctions. We've got a couple of brushes in here, which is quite helpful too, in fact so uh, that will be useful and uh, the usual very large sheet of uh, warnings so well you know you read that in your time but do read it so i've got my forced air extraction on and my blue nitrile gloves in fact these are a bit smaller 
from my wife but uh, anyway they'll do the job so acrylic PU one part PU two part epoxy uh, and I'm going to treat them all the same I am basically just going to paint it on with this little brush now the bottom three segments on each one are coated and uh, there's acrylic one for example that should come off in about 30 seconds this one should take a bit longer this one the PU two part should take quite a bit longer and the epoxy might take up to an hour or so according to the instructions from the manufacturer but there are lots of different types of epoxy PUs and things so uh, mileage may vary it may not even work who knows but uh, let's give it a go so I've set up a old-fashioned piece of clockwork just to keep track of the time and uh, I will reset that to uh, zero as soon as I finish applying the stripper to the first segment so here we go so just putting a reasonable amount on not a huge amount and just uh, making sure that it's covering it thoroughly comes this pink one and oh actually you can even see the pink <laughs> starting to come off on the on the brush even as we uh, progress so just the bottom segment of each one okay pu two part this is giving no signs of moving at all and the epoxy exactly the same all right leave it a moment or two okay let's have a look at the acrylic then and i'm just going to clean it off with a cotton or q-tip however you want to describe it and see what happens and i think what's happened is that uh, the coating has come off i think you can kind of just about see that on the camera so i'm really really pleased with that excellent result might just need a second coat maybe a few minutes more and maybe a bit more of a thorough method of cleaning but yeah it's done the job coated non-coated perfect Okay, so I'm just going to pop a little bit more on, just the leftover on the brush, really, just to uh, give it a last tidy up, I think. And that will also test whether or not it brings off the uh, silk screen. Okay then, so moving on to the second one, which is the one part unidentified PU. And let's have a look. And well, okay, that's obviously coming off extremely easily. It's just a case of removing the residues and, and things like that. What can you say about that? Easy. So I'll give the two part PU a little run over, but I'm not really expecting that to do much yet. It's a bit early for it, I think. So I'd say it's softened just a little bit around the edges, but certainly not enough to take the bulk of the coating off yet. Just put a bit more stuff back on it. Same with the epoxy, I'm just going to give that a little top up just to make sure it's not dried off. And uh, Okay, it's not the easiest to see. Um, oh, okay, well this is actually coming off reasonably well. It's all coming off, but... Uh, Certainly those resistors seem to have cleaned up reasonably well and most of what's around the transistors is starting to come off. It's certainly not done it fully, but it's done a fair bit. You can kind of see the comparison between the two. So I'd say it's about half come off at the moment on the epoxy, which is a lot faster than I expected. So I'm just applying a bit more onto the epoxy to be sure. I'm not going to leave this for very long. Uh, just see what difference it makes. I could do the EQ, but anyway. Yeah, you can kind of see where it's actually beginning to actually rub the epoxy all the way down to the board. The shiny part there is uh, where there's no epoxy left at all. So. Uh, yeah, it is getting there, that is for sure, but it could definitely do with a little bit longer. So also worth noting, just going back to this original one again, that the silk screen hasn't softened and come off at all. It's absolutely fine. So uh, yeah, no problem with that. All right, let's have a look at this two-part epoxy again, see if he's willing to play ball now. It's only been a few more minutes, but 
yeah we can kind of see this starting to flake off around the edges it's kind of peeling off rather than dissolving off as the others did but it's certainly softened let's just try the scalpel yeah look at that that's that's coming off very very easily now and uh, I think that uh, yeah look at that compared to the original that's hard just scratching it a little bit but the bottom one is uh, is soft and spongy coming off relatively easily if I've got a little brass brush I could probably just brush that off fairly well so yeah you can see kind of how relatively easy that has become to remove very flaky it's like it's like flaky paint with paint remover really still a bit firm where it's very deep in between these closely packed components they would presumably need a, a second coat so okay I'm stopping the clock at that it's been seven minutes and we have completely stripped in about 30 seconds the acrylic 491d we have stripped the one part PU without any problems we've also stripped much to my surprise the epoxy although it could do with a second coat and we've pretty much stripped the PU two part what's happened with that is it's softened and become kind of uh, jelly like where it's fine and just comes off easily uh, with a bit of abrasion um, I do think the PU two part probably needs uh, a little brass brush or a little um, this is not a little brush brush this is a very big brush brush but uh, anyway um, let's just uh, run it and see what happens yeah pretty much there just needs a little bit of attention to the uh, to the thick parts between the closely packed components so conclusion yes this 8310a conformal coating stripper from MG Chemicals work to treat. So I hope you enjoyed that. You find it useful. Maybe you need to add some of this to your tool bag. What I would say though, of course, is for small things, just like one-off connectors and things like that, and maybe one-off resistors, that sort of stuff, you are as well with just a scalpel or um, a fiberglass brush. You can get some four millimeter fiberglass brushes and two millimeter fiberglass brushes that are, that are great for just abrading a small amount of coating off small places and even when you stripped it you might find you want to use one of those just to uh, just to get good contact onto specific connectors and that sort of stuff you can also get them in brass and stainless steel little very fine four millimeter and two millimeter brushes so um, unfortunately I can't show you one of those because I broke my last one and it's in the bin and I'm waiting for a delivery of some new ones but uh, scalpel brushes this is probably going to cover most of your needs anyway i'll see you next time hope you enjoyed it if you did please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe see you later bye